36, and today is going to be part 3, I think, but it might be 4, but I'm pretty sure it's 3, in the Panzer IV House of H series. Today we're going to be doing the camouflage pattern and hopefully the weathering. So, for the camouflage scheme, I'm going to be making a custom mix of uh, XF4 and XF60 to make the uh, Dunkel Gale base color. And then for the inside of the Scherzen, I'm going to do a like a pre-coat of this 72, just to make it a little darker. It'll get some overspray when I do the normal uh, camouflage color, but, you know, it'll look better behind it once it, it's a darker color. And then for the actual camo pattern, I'll be using XF68 NATO Brown. And the camo scheme, uh, here, let me get it here. It's uh, going to be somewhat like this one here. You can see it's yellow with the brown squiggly things on it. But I'm also going to give it an overwash, like a, a white wash, to kind of like this vehicle over here. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be not really a real vehicle, but it'll be kind of sort of legit. I don't know. More of a more of a fun build. Yeah, so now I'm going to do the inside the shirts in which I have left removables. You can see over here and over there. I'm going to do a base coat on the inside of them with this uh, Japan Ground Self-Defense Horse Brown. Now that I have uh, put the brown on the inside of the side armor there on the turret and also on the hull, uh, I'm going to paint the tank with the main color, which is this and I'm like step around is what I have on the top, but it's Dunkel Kelp. I've just made like over the years I made a whole bunch of different colors. And uh they're all in here, kind of mixed together. So this is kind of like Dunkel Kelp average. It's mostly just these two. Uh but I'd say there's a little bit of uh 55 in there as well, probably just to lighten it. But it's just kind of like a thing you have to do by eye and with lots of testing and stuff. I have two XF60s, just notice that I have two of them. Alright, so now I'm going to paint it with that. So now you see that the tank has been given a base coat of the color that I kind of show in my custom mix over here. Yeah, and I just, I didn't do like a full coat of it. Like I didn't do most of the uh, track armor and stuff. I didn't paint the inside of the shirts because I already painted those. Didn't paint most of the wheel area because that's going to be all mud. Yeah, it's more of just kind of like a light coat because it's also going to be mud everywhere and weathering everywhere and a whitewash on this as well as camouflage. So I didn't have to do like a super perfect coat on it. I'll do the camouflage pattern next using a NATO brown and like a smaller needle on the airbrush. And now you can see that I've applied the camouflage pattern to the vehicle. Uh, I just did kind of like the camouflage that was shown in the book, but like a little bit different. In the book it was more like little squares and shapes, this one I kind of did more lines, but there are still a couple of those shapes. What happened with how it came out, uh, I did the panels, oh, that panel, some of the panels, there's a, okay, there's a couple of spots where it's not that great, because here on the panels I was doing it earlier and it was a little bit thick, like there and there I got a little blobby, and also on the back of the turret right here there's kind of like a big mess up, <laughs> but there's a white wash over it, and like, if I was doing this I'd repaint the yellow over that. And then redo the camo, but there's gonna be a white wash over this, so I can just kind of you know cover up those areas. Pretty happy with it though. I also didn't do like sections over here, and also the entire sides of the hull, because uh, that in real life the crew wouldn't do that if there's shirts in there, and also there would be less shirts in play there, so they wouldn't have done that and pretend that it fell off recently. Because as one of my modeling buddies told me once I was asking about would there be camo on the inside of the skirts, uh, he said that basically imagine that you're the German tank crew and you have half an hour to paint this, would you just paint in there for absolutely no reason? Because the shirts are guarded from the side and above. If there's like a plane, they're not going to see that angle, so you wouldn't do that. I just kind of did it over here. It wasn't super perfect, but you know there's a couple of gaps like near these. Uh, track armor and stuff like that, but white wash is gonna kind of stick in there more than it would on the exposed surfaces. Uh, yeah. Overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. I just did it with a very small, uh, fine needle on the airbrush. 
I like probably 15 psi. Yep. To, to the back too. Um. Yeah. Inside the turret, I'm gonna paint that still. I've also tried some of the AK uh, winter camouflage wasp stuff. It's on the bottom of the turret there, and it kind of you know you can see how it works. I kind of tried chipping it there uh, when it wasn't completely dry, but I just want to see how it works, and it's it's a bit kind of like thin, I guess. I don't know. So I think what I'll do is I'll use the airbrush and put some white on a couple of the areas where it's gonna be more where there's, there's gonna be like not no chipping. And then I'll put this on kind of over the whole thing and do the chipping and leave some sections out. And then I'll also work at it with some oil paints for kind of like streaking and more whitewash because the whitewash would be hand applied or with like a mop or something that wouldn't usually spray that. Unless it was factory applied, so that's why I'm not going to do much with the airbrush. Yeah. I'm also going to have to paint the tools probably. I'll to do that after though because they probably wouldn't get the whitewash or I'll just say they didn't. But I'm pretty happy with how it came out right now, so, yeah, on with the whitewash. So, uh, actually, now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the whitewash um, before I do the airbrush, just to kind of see how it goes. So this is the, the MIG Winter Camouflage Boss solution. Let's make another fresh top over here. And, uh... Yeah, it's a bit thin, but I guess I can just do some layers or kind of build it up or something. I'm not sure. I'm just going to put it on, see what I kind of get. I don't think it'll be kind of thick enough, so I might have to do a couple of coats or I'll probably do the airbrush. I'm just going to load this on. I don't have to do it super fancy because this is how the crew would do it. So now as you can see I've started to get the desired effect. Uh, the wash actually turns out nice. It kind of has a, well, at least on my vehicle, it starts to kind of crack and peel. I think I can show you it in the back of this vehicle, which I like because it's kind of like worn. I think that might be more, kind of what it's designed to do. Right over there. That's a good example of it. I think it's designed to do that, so it kind of looks like it's cracking and peeling a bit. Which is kind of what I want a whitewash to look like. Oh my god. There. So now I'm going to do some work with some oils. Got some white oil paint over here. And I'm just going to kind of thin it down and put it on as a thick wash. See how that goes on? So it's kind of like this thick, crappy stuff you can see. But that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to put that on. Uh, I'm just about that. I'll do it in the front here. I'm just making this as I go. I'm not even trying it on another vehicle. I'm just going for it because I can just take it off with with the uh, the appropriate thinner for the substance. And that's better. It's not thicker than the AK stuff. But I'll probably use them both kind of together. Hopefully, there's no explosive chemical reaction of mixing them. Of course, I just don't want you to be able to see the camouflage scheme underneath. I have to layer some more of the AK stuff on top of that. No hairspray chipping on this vehicle. I'm trying to do something else with it. 
seeing how well this AK stuff works and some oils because I do like those oils now you can see the vehicle is kind of ugly whitewashed but that's kind of what I'm going for you know now I'm taking the AK stuff and putting it back on over top of the still wet oils and you're probably thinking like I should never do that when they're both wet because they won't mix but that's what I want because if they don't mix properly then they'll be kind of you know it'll look kind of like chipped almost and layered and well hopefully it'll look good but I've got no idea alright now by slapping on a whole bunch of the uh, mix stuff after the uh, oils you can see that it's kind of doing what I was planning so you can see on the side skirts there, it's kind of getting all gross. Yeah, that side's pretty good, though. The way that it's it's kind of like running off and looking... Kind of was like it washed off because it is being washed off. It's not drying on properly, which is exactly what I'm going for. So now I'm just keep, I'm just keep on layering and kind of working at it until it looks good. And then I'll work on to the next section. But I'm happy with it. And then I'll put on some weather and stuff like that, you know turret over here. Uh, as you can see it's all window washed up as well except for that area there. And I'm gonna work on the shirts and stuff there as well. Or else take a while to try so I've got some working time. Yep, well, I'm happy with how it's coming out. Just keep on working. Alright so now you can see that the whitewash is pretty much complete. I'm probably going to be working on it a little bit more. Just kind of fiddling with it. Um, but you can see that over the entire vehicle I've done the I wash, but I still have to do like you know, the mud and stuff and mostly over the wheels and the side skirts. Now all the weathering of course is going to cover up the areas that are kind of, you know, bland. I'm quite happy with how that came out. I'm going to work a bit on that though. Don't like that in the middle there. But I like the streaking kind of worked out. Uh, I like this, especially the side skirts on the turret on this side, right about there. Zoom you in a bit. I'm really happy with how it's looking. As you can see, I also did a bit of work on some of the spare tracks. I got those are base coated because those aren't going to be whitewashed. The other ones, I'm probably going to work with some pigments on them, then maybe go over them again with the AK stuff. Not quite sure. Yeah, just. Overall, from the top of the turret there, you can see the kind of chipping and the peeling that the AK stuff makes. And then the engine deck over here. You can see what I got along there. Really happy with it. First time with a whitewash, really. No, well, I think actually not really, I think. Like, period. But yeah, so uh, you're yeah, never gonna start working on the weathering. But yeah, no but. So now I have uh, put some pigments on the um, spare tracks, as you can see there. And uh, essentially, what I did was I used uh, this burnt umber, kind of like rusty, but not super rusty, more like brown pigment and a little bit of track brown in certain areas which is a lot more brown darker brown and then I just put them on and then I put the whitewash over top of that and uh, also I and then some places I put the winter streaking grime just kind of like as a thick like I pretty much whitewashed it with this first and then with the uh, with the white with the whitewash actual material so I got kind of like green tones in there you can see on the one it's on the front there. Same thing on the one at the bottom there, on the, on the front plate. The one of the glasses there, is that just pigments? Uh, those tracks there are kind of different pigments, and then you can see the ones over there. Looking nice and rusty. And then along the turret, do those two, they got the whitewash on them. Yeah, so, looking good. And now is going to be, oh, we also put the decals on, I'll show you that. I put a uh, grizzly bar decal on there. You can see one on that side of the turret, and also on the other side as well. And then on the back I put some numbers. Um, 
Yeah, so now we're gonna do the mud. And for the mud, what I've got is I mixed up some pigments into a brown earthy color. I just used the dry mud, the track brown. And now I'm going to put some oh, white spirit in there. And then it's gonna be a mud material. And I'll just apply this on the uh, on the wheels and areas like that where I want it to be. If it's not thick enough, I might add some uh, acrylic gel medium, which might thicken it up a bit and make it more like a uh, mud. Yeah, I think I'll do that. It's a bit too thin right now. All right, um, where did that go? This is it here. We can focus. So it's it's kind of like this thick stuff. I don't know how to describe it, but if you can open it, then it makes a kind of like a goopy texture. You can see it's kind of like this yogurty kind of stuff, and it dries up mats and it's kind of clear so you don't notice it so we can put it uh, over the wheels and suspension areas not going to be too pretty but you know it's supposed to be this kind of thick mud crap it's not supposed to be really nice I'll put some more pigments on top of this this is just for like a, a base texture and color As you can see in the side skirt there, I've kind of got some you know, like splatter of mud. I'm going to show you how I do that. What I've got here is something called a toothbrush, which you should know of. And then I've got the stuff here, which is the crap mud. And then I stick it in. And then I just kind of run my finger along it like this. As you can see there on the, uh, the fender. It makes a really nice mud. Uh, texture and splatter kind of pattern. You also kind of stipple it like that, it works too. Some people do it with the airbrush too. We take a, like a, you put it like this or whatever, the process is your paintbrush and it's got in it. Take your airbrush and it's like blast air. That works too, but this is just faster for me right now. But as you can see on these sides, I'm really happy with how that's coming out the mud. On the wheels too, I'm just going to do a little more on the tracks because I want it to be completely covered in mud. So I don't know if everybody knew exactly what I meant by covered in mud before, but hopefully now they do. Uh, if I can somehow pick up the vehicle. There. You can see that there's a lot of mud on it now. Which is what I am going for. I'm also going to put some snow on. I'll show you how I do that. But yeah, it's looking really nice. And the, uh, the splattering with the toothbrush I did that when I put the turret on as well because I wanted mud everywhere I'm really liking it 
So now I'm going to be weathering the vehicle. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do much streaking on it because it's kind of a whitewash, so it wouldn't have been on for a very long amount of time. And all the mud splatters and the chipping that's kind of already on the whitewash looks pretty good already. So I might do a bit of streaking in certain areas. Uh, but I'm going to give the entire wash, uh, the, the entire vehicle a wash. And I'm going to probably do with oil paints because I'm afraid that if I do with white spirits, I will, uh, like an on, on enamel, which is an enamel wash, which is thin with white spirits, I would ruin the white wash. Um, because the oils, if I put some there on top of the oils, it'll respond like at a much more, I don't know, it'll respond better. It won't like immediately come off like the enamels would if I were going to do it on an enamel wash. So I'm probably going to do that. Probably dark brown. Uh, probably like, let's see, I got raw umber here, so maybe this. Oils are pretty nice for washes. Enamels are great too. I, I don't really have a preference between them, but you know. Yeah, I'm pretty happy that it came out. Yeah, yep, so now it's time for the wash. Alright, so here's the wash. Uh, I told you how I do this in the BT7 uh, oils video. Um, so, I'm just gonna... I did it the exact same way, it's the same kind of wash. So I'm just gonna kind of put it on. See how it goes. Not like down all the, uh, the crevices, just to some certain points. More of a pin wash than an overall wash. So before I was thinking that I was probably going to paint the tools separately, but I changed my mind now. I'm just going to go a little bit heavier on the oil wash to make them more kind of obvious because the crew wouldn't care. They would just put the white wash over top of it because as I was saying before, just imagine you were the crew and you had like basically to paint it as fast as you possibly can. What would you do? It's a good thing to remember when you're painting your vehicle. So, I, so I've applied the wash over the vehicle, as you can probably see. Here's like the turret. The wash also has accentuated like the chips and cracking of the paint in some areas. Also adds kind of like a grimy place. And sometimes I just kind of put it in splotches, kind of like you can see over there, as well as the engine deck over here in some splotches. It kind of makes it look like a little dirty and stuff. And I also use it as wash, obviously. And now we're going to paint the uh, inside of the turret, or at least the uh, the hatches there on the turret. Now in real life, the inside of the Panzer IV's turret is kind of like an, it's kind of like an ivory, beigey, white color, I can't really describe it. Uh, I'm not sure whether the inside of the, of these hatches was painted the same color, because often they wouldn't paint like the hatches. Uh, as you saw my BT-7, I was talking about this, so the inside of the hatch wasn't painted white. Because if they open up the hatches, then it's like ruins the camouflage, and they'd often have the hatches open when they're like resting, you know. So often the hatches were painted the same color as the vehicle, but the inside was kept like a very light color, like white, to like uh, reflect what little light there was in there around better than like black or something. So the hatches here right now they're the custom paint color, and I think I'm gonna paint them uh, like the pale color anyways just because well, I think I I think they sometimes were I know they were on early war vehicles but whatever I don't think I'm just gonna do it anyways just to add some contrast so I'm just gonna paint them with XF55 which is this 
you know, it's like a concretey kind of color, as you can see there, if it will focus on it, which it won't. And now I'm just going to paint like the jerry cans and things that are in these racks on the side that I added. Once again, this color that I'm using is a custom color, but it's it's one that is the right color. <laughs> Don't know, you can, I mixed it myself. It's just this color. It's like a panzer grayish color. So now I'm going to put uh, the track wash over the wheels and tracks, mostly just the wheels though to make it kind of look a bit like the mud and look a bit wet in some places. You know, it's got some kind of like variances because it looks a bit dusty right now because it's just the pigment. So I put the track wash kind of on the tracks and wheels as you can see all over the vehicle. Left some spots obviously exposed on the side skirts I also worked up a bit and did the flicky thing with the uh, toothbrush. Yeah, so it's pretty good right now. I think I'll do a bit of streaking, but I'm not actually sure because the... It's kind of got some streaking to it already, and I, did, and I did a bit with the pigments. Yeah, but... I don't know, everybody's probably saying like, oh, well, why'd you go with the camo <laughs> if you're going to do this to it? But if you look closely, like, you can see the camo through it and it also has, like, some, like, a, and also has some different tones, like I'll show you. You can see the camo through there. You can see it. Over here on the front, there's mud everywhere, which is what I was going for, dirt everywhere. You can see the camo poking through in a couple spots there. You can see the yellow there, obviously. And on the turrets there, on the side of there, that's really nice. You can see the camo through there. Side skirts, like, you can see that there's, like, a camo underneath. There's, like, you know, there's, you can see clearly right there, there's, like, a line and kind of over here. and You can see them through, so it has an effect. Also on the uh, on the on the rear hull there, and over there as well. I'm gonna try to turn this around, but I don't know where I can touch it. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. You can see right there the. Uh, the different color that I put there for the uh, open doors there, the turret side. And also, there's like that little viewport there. The way I did that was I just took some the lacquer thinner and put on a paintbrush and then just kind of scrubbed away the paint that was there. And also you can see the jerry can and the things in there. The, the, the little like uh, Panzer Shrek rockets that I put in there for absolutely no reason. I kind of worked on them a bit. The wheels have been whitewashed over though. Yeah, so overall, really nice. What's next? So I decided that I will do some streaking on the vehicle, but only on the uh, plain areas of the turret basket, as you can see here. And uh, luckily, when I built the vehicle, I didn't glue this on because then I thought that'd make it easier to spray paint behind there. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to do some streaking. Right, so first of all, I'm going to take some of AK's 
streaking grime. And then I'm just gonna make kind of streaks with it. Just like that doesn't have to be pretty yet. And now you take your brush and just kind of moisten it with some white spirit or whatever, AK thinner. And then you can just kind of work at the streaks. I also did the same thing with the uh, winter streaking grime uh, as well here, which is more green. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. Got some streaks going there, as well as on this side. I'm liking it though. So I think I'll be doing the same on the inside of the Scherzen, maybe. And a couple spots here on the turret inside there maybe. But other than that the vehicle's been pretty much done. So I think I'm pretty much done with the weathering now. If I do anything else it'll just be more streaking like that, like I did on the back of the turret basket there. But just like random spots. But I don't think I'll do that. It looks pretty good right now. Uh, but now what I'm gonna do is add some snow effects to the running gear. What I'm going to use for that is this stuff, it's called Sculpt Mold. I don't know where you can get it in the world, but pretty much what it is is like this. It's like pa uh, plaster. Pretty much like pa uh, plaster of Paris, but I don't know, it might be a little different. And what I can just do is add some water to the running gear and then just kind of sprinkle it on. And then it sticks. It's pretty simple. So the water's over here. It's got a brush. Don't want to put on a lot of it, just just a bit to simulate like it's been kind of picked up by the wheels a bit. stick to the places where it's wet because it's like plaster. I'll just pick up those big pieces after. Now what I do to get some really fine powder to like sprinkle on to simulate snow is I take a clump of the sculpt mold like this, you know, and I just kind of do this in my hand. I'm just kind of beat it up. I just kind of lightly tap that stuff out, and then I get this thin powder stuff. And then I can kind of, you know, put it onto the vehicle. Excess and then it's good. So now you can see that I've got the snow all over the vehicle, just on the wheels. I didn't feel like putting it over the top of the hull just because I don't know, I think it's nice the way it is, just not like simulate snow fell in the vehicle, even though it probably would have, but still. I just want to simulate it kind of going through snow and snow getting kind of like trapped in the mud and the wheels and stuff, you know. Sculpt mold makes a nice effect. I did this a couple times before. Uh, 
Uh, so I guess that's pretty much it. Nothing else I'm really going to do this vehicle, and if I do anything else, it'll just be more streaking. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I guess that kind of wraps up this series of the Panzer IV House of H. Uh, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or like, uh, comments, or if you have any other like tips that might help people when they're watching the video or help me, feel free to post them in the comments section. Uh, yeah, so... Thanks for watching, guys.